Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about the programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. You'll now see a new look to represent the city and its brand. The updates include a new logo, new graphics package, and new programming right here on Channel 2. The city's new logo is not only timeless and simple, it's also easily recognized as belonging to Kansas City. That's because the new logo is a classic KC. The new logo will join a new graphics package that will be used on the city's website, television station, and publications, including the biannual KC Moore magazine, which is on the way to homes now. The city's television station, Channel 2, is transitioning from standard to high definition, and this comes with fresh programming as well, starting with Kansas City Stories, which features independently produced stories highlighting Kansas City artists, entrepreneurs, nonprofits, and more. The improvements aren't over yet. January 1, 2014, the city launches a new and improved website as well. It's all part of an effort to improve communications and engagement between you and your city. Public Works crews have completed the first major construction project on Northwest 72nd Street near I-29 since it was first paved in the 1970s. The improved roadway includes a three-lane street with curbs, a new sidewalk, street lights, bicycle accommodations, improved storm drainage, and roadway leveling. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Heidi Downer with Kansas City Parks and Recreation. October in the city is filled with activities. Here's a sampling of fun things to do. The public is invited to view a gallery of juried paintings of the Brush Creek Walkway at the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center, 3700 Blue Parkway. The display is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. through October 24th. Paintings will be for sale. For more information, see brushcreekartwalk.org. Bring the entire family for a walk on the wild side at Lakeside Nature Center in Swope Park. Walk the nature trail and listen to costume animal characters tell their stories. This Magic Woods program is offered from 6 to 9 p.m. on Friday, October 11th and from 5 to 9 p.m. on Saturday, October 12th. The cost is $5 a person, with children under 3 admitted free. Are you yearning for a simpler time? Visit the Shoal Creek Living History Museum in Hodge Park for an old-fashioned county fair on Saturday, October 12th. From 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., the town comes to life with 19th century reenactors performing skits, skirmishes, and demonstrations. Explore log cabins, take a horse-drawn wagon ride, and enjoy magic and puppet shows, live music, apple butter making, and more. The cost is $5 a person, with children five and under admitted free. Waterfire Kansas City has become one of the most anticipated events in the community. Visit Brush Creek on the Country Club Plaza on Saturday, October 12th for free performances by Quixotic, the Theater League, and dozens of other actors and musicians amidst a backdrop of floating, fire-filled braziers. Events are scheduled from dusk to 11 p.m. and food and beverage will be sold on site. Visit waterfirekc.com for more details. A new dog park is being built in the city of North Kansas City at Northeast 32nd Street and Swift. The public is invited to a groundbreaking ceremony at 2 p.m. on Wednesday, October 16th for this project that is jointly sponsored by the city of Kansas City, Missouri. For more information about these and other events, see the Parks and Recreation website at kcparks.org or give us a call at 816-513-7500. In addition to solving the crime, KCPD has always taken an active role in linking the families of homicide victims to services available to help them through an extremely difficult time. At the direction of Chief Forte, this victim-centered approach has now been expanded to reach families that are impacted by any violent crime with the creation of the Victims Assistant Unit. Director Doug Wisher explains. The staff is, consists of uh, sworn officers at this point, and uh, there's four of them, 
And what they do is they, they're assigned currently aggravated assaults to contact victims by phone predominantly. And they basically provide uh, assistance in, in three ways. If there's crisis intervention that's required, they'll help with that. They're trained to do that. Uh, other than that, they're going to give the victim rights information and, and compensation information that is required by state statute of our police department to provide victims. If a victim of an, an aggravated assault, for example, has been shot, the detective in the case will, will try to find the, the suspect and work the case, try to get it to court for trial. But in the meantime, the victim has medical bills from the, the wound, may have need for trauma counseling, all those kind of things that, that, that are a result of the crime that occurred may, occur, may, may uh, resound into a, uh, a cascade of services that they need. And, and what we do is we try to hook them up with services that our community already provides, who can provide everything from basic needs, shelter, food, clothing, child care, transportation, and then we have a lot of partners that have, are helping us with, with mental health counseling, for trauma counseling, grief counseling, spiritual counseling, that kind of thing. Uh, we've, had, we've had a victim advocate in Jennifer Miller who's done this for many, many years. So she's, she's been doing it over 20 years, and her focus has been predominantly with homicide victims, families, survivors of homicides. And it's been very effective, and we've, we've understood, and I think Chief understood how effective that is. But we really need to expand beyond just homicide victims' families. And having a staff to, to, to be able to do what Jennifer does with additional victims like aggravated assault, robberies, uh, sex crimes, and, and all the violent crimes that are out there uh, will really help us be able to touch a lot more people. These victim assistance specialists, they are, although they are police officers and detectives, um, they are really trained to become, uh, in a very real sense, a, an entirely different element that, than we've had in our police department. If you look at Jennifer Miller and see what she does, they're, they're going to mirror what she does. Community relations is a, is a huge piece of this. Uh, the whole point of the chief uh, with one of his strategic plan objectives was to expand community policing to the entire department. So by doing this in the Investigations Bureau, it's a, it's a piece that hasn't been there expanded to the extent that we, we now can do it. And we know it works. It worked with Jennifer Miller, we'll continues to work with her. So we're giving her some additional help. The addition of the Victims Assistant Unit is one more step in KCPD's commitment to positively impact the quality of life for the community we serve. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Looking ahead, need something to do next weekend? You're bound to find something for the whole family to enjoy in downtown Kansas City. Check out the Grammy and Tony Award winning Broadway musical Wicked at the Music Hall through October 27th. Or get an early jump on holiday shopping at the annual Kansas City Holiday Mart from October 17th through the 20th at Bartle Hall. For more downtown Kansas City events, visit kcconvention.com. The city will host two curbside leaf and brush collections this fall. Collection for residents in the South Zone takes place the weeks of October 21st and November 18th. On the regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on the curb. Collection for Central Zone residents is the weeks of October 28th and December 9th, and North Zone pickup is the weeks of November 4th and December 2nd. To find out when your pickup day is, visit kcmo.org slash trash and click on Leaf and Brush Collection. For more information about this or any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.org, scroll to the bottom right-hand corner, and click on the Weekly Report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.